Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well today. It's very exciting. Grinelli, say hello Grinelli. Hello. And thank you very much for coming to see us. And then you're bringing to our attention this new plane. My understanding is it is going to be free. It's the Edge 540 and it's a racing plane. Is that right, Grinelli? Yes, sir. The Edge 540 we're bringing to VARS. We've had a nice little group of uh, talented individuals. We have aero, flight model engineer, aerodynamic, uh, ed educated individual very talented guy very cool dude put two years back and forth of trying to get this plane to fly as good as it can fly and uh really did a stellar job for just being an individual in the community we've also had jazz aero participate with aero as well to do the engine modeling and some of the other technicals he did a fantastic job myself we had sensory eight do some stuff with the EFIS screen and so a nice little team uh, all around to come to put together an Edge 540 that is trying to be an Edge 540. Absolutely, yeah, and I love these. I've such massive congratulations to anyone that does a free module like this. I mean, the amount of work that goes into it. Well, uh, I recently made a video uh, about simply the fact that making stuff is really hard. Criticizing stuff, really easy. Everyone can do that. Making stuff, especially stuff that's good, incredibly difficult. So it's great you guys have uh, done this. Now, this is, uh, like I said, kind of a racing plane. What's your real life experience? How did you get into this particular plane? Why did you go after this plane? A couple of years ago, I reached out to a gentleman named Shadow who did an air racing series in DCS. And I've always been interested in aviation and air racing, uh, you know, as a young boy uh, to this day. And we always wanted to bring something different and dynamic to DCS that was clickable, its own flight model, and something that we can do to get with our friends and kind of unwind after all the case ones and all the mm -hmm, sorting, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So we got together with these guys. We brought them all together. Uh, we, we built this community. We created this virtual air racing series. We created some fun pylon assets and some stuff to race around. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to have all these people come together and experience something. Even though it's DCS, it's still one of the better looking and feeling flight sims that we have access to. And why go to another flight simulator when you want to unwind? So we brought all our talents together and we dumped it on DCS and uh, we hope everybody can enjoy it. Roger, that sounds all very good and perfectly logical. Okay then, for this video, we're gonna just wrap everything into one. This It's just not a complicated enough plane, I think, to do you know a start tutorial, a landing tutorial. So I think we're all gonna kind of bunch it into one, along with first impressions and first flight, because we haven't flown it yet. So let's have a quick look on the outside and let's just see what Grinelli's done. Are you the, what are you, are you the 3D modeler, Grinelli? I can't remember. Uh, I did some artwork, I did some code work. I kind of did a whole lot of everything here. The model was done by a gentleman by the name of Alien Pioneer, and then we did some changes, some tweaks. We modified the cockpit. We did some work with the pilot models and stuff like that and kind of tailored it to fit our kind of custom needs. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. It's top class. Uh, you sent some pictures to me a while ago, and I wasn't that impressed, but, you know, pictures are very... Um, you just can't see the detail. But now I can see the detail. I'm just having a look around the various structures of the plane. A quick comment it sounds absolutely fantastic cool it's a stick and rudder type of airplane absolutely. high performance lightweight my type of plane to be honest okay have a look at the outside really i like it i like it that's a you know that's a 50 60 dollar aircraft at the end of the day which is cool inside now apologies i'm aware that there's no light we couldn't get the sun in a position to to show light so you're just gonna have to take my word for it it's, it's like it's this carbon fiber that i'm looking at here Yes, the dash is all carbon. So this is a quite a high. This is a really specifically made high performance plane by the feels of it. You know, if you're going to have it, it's got Absolutely. a tubular structure, which is either I guess steel or aluminium, and then carbon fiber. You know, it's how much would a real one of these planes set you back? Do you know? Uh, it's a probably a six figure number yeah, at the end of the day mm -hmm. when you get it all and done. I don't think any two of these aircraft are the same either. I, th I think all these guys that, that race and fly mm -hmm. these planes professionally mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. probably probably in the realm of, uh, you know, everybody has their own kind mm -hmm. of preferences and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, you know, around 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 three, four hundred thousand to get your hands on one of these planes and then mm -hmm. to have everything else you need to run it. 
<laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it's a big number. This is not a Cessna. Right. Yep. Roger that. Reminds me of when we, I used to look at the uh, the races for, um, sorry, I forgot the name of the race now, but the one where they have Mustangs in it in the desert and how bespoke each Mustang is. There's very little actual Mustang left in there. Oh, someone had an error. We'll cut that out. Don't worry. I see all of this. I'm sorry, I'm just saying, uh, if you wonder what I'm doing, I just look around the cockpit so the, the viewers can just see everything that's in the cockpit and everything's nicely, highly modelled. Texas all look really nice. Okay, so we've had a good look round. We'll test the sound when we go up and have a bit of a jazz. So let's have a look at the dash of the cockpit, shall we? So and we've got, um, I'm gonna, we'll start it up as well at the same time. I've got my master switch on, I've got my boost on. I've got my fuel selector to middle there. So we've got a, this is a barometric alt altimeter, yeah, that we can zero, yeah. Awesome. The thing below, oh yes, there's a stopwatch below the altimeter, isn't it? Mm hmm It does work as well, I've just happened to be that hard to use it. Start, stop, there we go. Did you sample the real aircraft for this? Sounds amazing. Yeah. Yes, this is a sample of the real 540. Roger. It's got this cool kind of LCD display. What was that called? You got two of them actually. The smaller one. What was that called? The center. The center uh, display is what we refer to as the race display, or uh, it's a UAV navigation piece of equipment they use in the real planes that we modeled it. The okay. race display is specifically designed for air racing. It shows your velocity and your G uh, indicated right in front of your face, and it's tied to that little circuit board that's running uh, horizontal there across the dash. Yep. And uh, that's the LED peripheral vision indicator. So as your speed increases, the LEDs will light up. As your G increases, if you're in G mode, your uh, LEDs will light up incrementally toward the center as you pull more G. And it's basically just a warning when yep. you're looking for pylons and you're pulling 7, 8 G, you have an idea of where you're at without having to look at a gauge. Awesome, awesome, okay. And we can also have a backup ADI there, which is awesome. Yes, and we also have a backup ADI built into that race display. Roger. Now tell me about the big screen here. It's probably best if you just go through it. Okay, so the big screen is broken up into four pages. We have our navigation page, which is displayed currently. We have RPM, the main ADI. We have our altitude tapes, a compass, very basic, uh, standard as far as we could go without having SDK and mm -hmm. putting cameras and mm -hmm. forward-looking sensors and stuff that you'd see in a typical Garmin system. On the second page, we find our electrical system and some customizability. We will be able to control nav lights, flood lights, gauge backlights, the wallpaper for the display, the color of the floodlights, and we have a, a smoke display at the bottom right that will allow us to monitor the onboard smoke, which is fine. So you will be able to run out of smoke oil when you're in the air. Roger. I'm kind of getting As, I'm kind of getting quite excited by the sound. I've never seen this type of plane in real life, I'll say that. But the sound almost reminds me like going to a race or a car racing circuit or something. <laughs> it's, absolutely. It's like a bunch of angry bees it really flying is, isn't around. It? Yeah. Okay, carry on please. Now, as we move on to the third page, uh, as I said earlier, this is our homage to uh, Heepler and uh, all the talented work that they do for us. Uh, we decided to add an MP3 player that you will be able to customize as many or as little songs as you would like. We will provide tutorials on how to set that up, but you're able to put in your own music and you'll be able to customize the playlists and flip through the different songs, listen to the songs, and uh, shred your Edge 540. So that's a fun little uh, homage there to, to our, our favorite friends there at Heepler. Then on our final page, we will arrive at our uh, customization or configuration menu. This is another play toward the X-Plane side of Flight Sim. Everything on this page is purely cosmetic and has nothing to do with the flight model of the aircraft. You'll be able to detach the winglets on the corner of the wings, you'll detach the spades on the ailerons, you'll be able to illuminate the entire fuselage or sections that you so choose by making an alpha mask in Photoshop. Uh, you will be able to uh, hide or show the race equipment 
in the front of the dash and pull up an aerobatic routine uh, if you so choose to try to do some aerobatic stuff. And the final piece on the right, you're able to customize between six different pilot heads. Uh, the pilot wearing a helmet, wearing a hat, or not wearing anything at all. All these changes are in real time and will affect your aircraft, and everyone else will see your aircraft as you've configured it. Yeah, I really like that. That's really, uh, I've not seen anything like that in DCS so far. Sorry, I haven't just shout, but the boys are being loud. Um, the, the how you can change some of that in real time. So it's great that you guys are really pushing the limits at the moment. It's awesome. So the, and the final thing there is the racing suit and our custom pilot model is provided in the paint kit available publicly. So you will not only be able to paint your plane, but you can ensure that your pilot is wearing the appropriate sponsored suit, put your name on it, put your face on it if you dare. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of customize, uh, customizability with this aircraft. Roger. Right. Um, next, we'll a very quickly look at the controls. I'm just going to quickly show you. All your normal stuff in axis control, so you pitch, you roll, you rather left and right, axis for left wheel brake, right wheel brake, uh, you want your prop lever as an axis, you want your throttle as an axis, you want a zoom view as an axis, you can play that and go back and screenshot that if you want. Also, um, you want the current UAV setup, you want LED setup, you can slow this down and look for this again if you want. You want smoke set up and there is more. Do you want to quickly go over the smoke system about what you told me? Yeah, so the smoke system, uh, Jazz, Aero, and uh, Aero came up with a very brilliant system. I think it's the first ever in DCS. It's a finite smoke system. So when you spawn in and add smoke oil to the plane, you will start with 10 gallons. There are three customizable options. You can make the smoke un unlimited or infinite or finite. And you can also add or subtract the amount of smoke oil that you bring with you. So if you were running finite smoke oil, you ran out of oil, you could easily just add the oil back in. Uh, we allowed that for whatever level you want to take yeah. it at. If you yeah. want to land and force yourself to land, when you refuel, you add your smoke back in, so be it. It's however far you'd like to take it. Roger, beautiful. Okay, well I, I'm going to close down. God, this... I don't know, is it cramped in one of these things? I can't really tell. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Awesome. Cool. This is really fit, built around the pilot, isn't it? It's, that's a real piece of kit. Okay. What's the um, thing that looks all like a camera or a gun on the front, by the way? Just an intake scoop. Roger. And what type of engine is this? Like a piston flat engine or something? Like a... Ocean. This is a Lycoming engine. It is a uh, piston gasoline engine. Roger. Okay, right. I'm going to start up. I've pretty much showed you how to do it. I'm just going to do the key. Comment at this point. Testing. We do not have uh, brakes working, so you will have, will have brakes working at some point, obviously. And I'm going to start up. There we are. Right, now this is the first time. This is as far as I've got now, so this is all live now. So, Mr. Grinelli. Oh, I've got the brakes working, I think. Yep, okay. I'm so, I sort of know where I'm going. Right, I'm just going to try and take off in the middle of nowhere. Anything I should know, Grinelli? Uh, do not pull too much on takeoff. Try to let the aircraft kind of lift itself off the runway. Roger. It's a tail dragger. Oh, <laughs> someone's just crashed it. Tail dragger, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Wondering why it's skidding, it's because I've got my wheel brakes jammed on. Oh, first go cap. I screwed it. Screwed it, Grinelli. Right, I'm going to try again. Right, okay, we're in now. So, a little bit of throttle, a little bit of rudder. Oh, okay, there she goes. Okay, right, she is a tetchy little thing. Hey, supercap! Look at that. Ooh, okay. Hey, this feels nice. Hey, guys! What does the 540 mean in the name? Does anyone know? I believe the 540 is because it's got a Lycoming 540. It's a six cylinder air cooled right uh, piston engine. Right. Uh, what's this reading in kilometers an hour, knots, or 
not. Roger. Well, she accelerates quick, you know. I know she's going to have a limited top speed, obviously, but... I'm 200 quick. knots. Mm. 200 knots already. It's on the other side of the wings. What are they? For? The what on the wings, sorry? Speed. Spades, almost, on the underside of them. So the spades are for control for the pilot, so they make it... It's kind of like sticking your hand out of the window of a moving car and you cup your hand one way and the other way and you kind of move it with the wind. It allows the pilot right. to have a little yeah. bit more control over the, uh, you know, stick and rudder per se, the ailerons when you're, when they're rolling. Oh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. Now I got told off because of the Christian Eagle. I said the Christian Eagle moves unrealistically, rolls unrealistically quick, kind of like this. And then I got told off by real pilots, Nick Gray, and everyone told me off. Said no, they do, they do roll like this in real life. You know, it's high-performance planes can roll and change direction like this. It's amazing. Really. Absolutely, the Edge 540 features a 420-degree roll rate. Let me try that out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 230 knots at 230 knots you will get 420 degree roll rate per second wicked who needs an f-16 boys oh that's dizzy going over for a loop oh hello buddy <laughs> this is awesome it sounds it sounds like a little two-cylinder no not a two-cylinder a two-stroke uh motorbike or something in formation with me yeah, that's me off your oh, right. Oh, that's you, is it? Awesome. Oh, got another Grim Reaper coming. I'll back off the. I'll back off, guys, so you can catch me up. I aim for 150. I think I overdid my engine. It's just stopped. Oops. How embarrassing for you. You might have run out of fuel. Oh, oh, that might have happened. So this is gonna have a small gas tank, then, isn't it? Being about performance, kind of, um, you know, this is not for endurance. Yeah, the, the total capacity, I believe, is 58 gallons. However. You would never do aerobatic maneuvers with uh, fuel in the wings. Roger. Would it damage the plane? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It Roger. would definitely be unsafe. Right. Do you want to take the lead, Grinnelly? I can't actually find formation. As long as you sure. stick under full power. Grin has the lead. Right. You can take me for a little uh, a flyby. Uh, the rest of you come and meet up with us. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Well, I just smacked into one and it didn't kill me, it just knocked me unconscious. So, sorry, I didn't listen to what the pylon gates were for. I see them, but... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and take a run past them. We'll, uh, we'll pass the racetrack. Well done. Up. Yeah, the spades, the spades just make it easier for the pilot to control the ailerons at high speeds with the amount of force. It, you know, it takes a, oh, okay. yeah, a, a pretty strong individual to be able to muscle those control surfaces with uh, all the right. weight on their right. it's just, surfaces. It's just direct cable, I suppose. Yeah, it's that whole system in between your legs there, all those red tubes. Yep. Watch out. So off to our right, we have a replication of Abu Dhabi. Roger. That uh, features the Virtual Air Racing Series uh, air racing code developed by Shadow. Roger. And uh, that will track your times, it'll track missed gates, it'll track uh, missed altitudes. Very, very clever, very cool stuff. Oh, I really look forward to doing this thing, because we like doing air racing, but we don't have anything set up for it, obviously, so that's awesome. Where are the rest of your hogs? It's just us two. Your wing cap. Good. Tally. Nice skin. I didn't realize we had skins. Yeah, there's about 12 default liveries. Cool. Yeah, there's some wrong here, so I'm gonna restart. I like it. I think it flies really well, actually. I'm, uh, I'm chuffed with it. Arrow did a phenomenal job with the flight model. Yeah. I, I can't thank him enough. Uh, you know, uh, Arrow and Jazz and all the other guys, Sensory, that helped out with this project. Uh, we have Wofare with Dreadnought. Uh, Dudley, Razor Dudley, there's so many guys that, that came together and were willing to, to work together to make it as fun and as cool as it could be and okay. I'm really grateful for that. It's really easy to, especially with a light plane, make it kind of feel like a spaceship, but by which I mean making it lose any feel, but this has still got feel, I've still got a bit of weight I can feel in it, even though it is a, you know, a little bumblebee at the end of the day, so uh, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with it. And not only that, but with the multi-crew, you know, you get a couple friends that are on the fence about DCS. You yep. get them in the TF-51, 
you get them in the MB339, you get them in the Edge 540, and you got a nice little roundabout bit of content you can go fly with your friends and Roger. Do we have any working gates out here then? Any working gates? Oh, absolutely. Here? If you want, we can uh, yeah. we can head yeah. toward the track. Yeah. So let's all fall in the trail here. Or yeah. you know what? The most sense if if you just continue to orbit around the perimeter of the air the air race track, I'll drop in on the track for you and I'll try to make a clean lap. Roger. Uh, so that you can see how it works and then you guys can all drop in Roger. and give it a shot. Okay. So let's just quickly go over a little bit about what's gonna happen with the air racing stuff. So the reason we have the LED monitor in the front of our dash is to warn us that we're over 200 knots. If we try to enter the start finish gate, above 200 knots it will disqualify us above 203 i believe um if you're above 200 you will receive a penalty anything over 203 will result in a dq okay. all right so i'm coming in here we'll go smoke on abu dhabi is set up for a uh two lap race course So we fly through the slalom, head for our first double, and we pull up into the vertical into a half Cuban. We'll roll out and meet this next double gate as we fade to the right around these. Now it's also worth mentioning that I do not have to fly wings level through the gates like other high performance sport air racing. Roger. And we just make these two runs. And then as right now, I'm receiving air racing information in the top right of my screen yep. as a uh, pilot on the track. You will see my final result here as I come through the final two gates. Ping, there you go. 55. So there's a 55.92 with zero missed gates, zero missed altitudes, and I cross the finish line at 204 knots. All right, Seahorse, you ready? Roger. Right, remember, not allowed above 200, or 200, basically. All right, heading to start position. Why do I feel this isn't going to go well? Easy as she does it. Uh, Seahorse, we are not Cronelli. We are just amateurs. Copy. I'm going to let you go. I'll watch from above and then drop in after you've been. Chicken. <laughs> okay, start. Oh, shit. This is harder than it looks already. Ah, it's so hard. Ah, uh, off Cuban. Wow, this will improve your dogfight skills. Uh, as we go, I haven't missed anything so far. Nope, we're doing good. Uh, you know what? I'm not using the rudder. That's my problem. Got to start kicking some rudder in here. No one wanted oh, to no see one. that. Ah, oh, in the face. All right, see, horse, off you go. I'm going to give you a tip. Speed and power does not win this one. <laughs> Is this one on the right, yeah? Uh, yes. uh, yeah, on the right, yeah. And then you got chicane, and then you're into the pull-up gate. The half Cuban, correct, yep. Also, Cap, we're probably just a roundabout out of fuel. <laughs> or I guess you're not anymore, I apologize. Ah, Tony is hard! I told you it was hard! <laughs> go on, someone else have a go. Follow Grinelli. Just do what he does. I told you it was hard. The seahorse be like, oh, I got this. He's through, half Cuban. Oh my god. Yep. Ah! <laughs> Failed seahorse! Oh <laughs> Alright, I'm having another go. The plane will remember where your controls were. So if you oh, crash right. and then you go back in your full throttle, the plane will come back full throttle. So be ready on the stick. Roger. And I go. Right, remember Cap, not speed and power. Not speed and power. Just get the just get it right. 
Rudder, 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 rudder. Yes, I did the first camera. Power on. Cuban up over the top. Oops. All right oops. to the. <laughs> Don't worry, that won't be on camera. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. It's excellent. I like this. I think it flies great. Once this is released, Sunday fun days will never be the yeah, same. I know. Everyone can have one as well. Oh, God. Come on, come on. Yes, my first lap is complete. That's his finish. Cap, make sure that your RP at the prop lever is all the way forward. Oh god, I don't dare even look. I can't look. I can't remember what button I put it to. Uh, I'm getting. You know what, guys? I'm getting the hang of this. I know I'm having to go slower, but I think I've got my prop pitch wrong, wrong at the moment. I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. Come on, I want my time. I want my time. Well, you really have to fly this plane, don't you? Oh! Pull, 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 pull. And time! 1 minute 38.38. Hey, it's the first time, guys. The first time. All right, Mr. Grinelli. I'm pretty chuffed with that, all in all. Um, if we are allowed to, we would love to go and use it in our uh, silly Sunday things and crash it into people and have fun. It's just like kind of oh, a expanded CE2 at the end of the day. So, everyone, any idea? Do you know when it's coming out, roughly? Or are we allowed to say? What's the score on that? Uh, we're, I, I've learned from uh, not to field dynamics mm -hmm. from not to, to give an actual date. How we are close. I'm trying my best to fix the brakes and work with the rest of the guys to try to clean up a couple of the little things. Um, soon, let's say two more weeks. Or oh, so two more weeks. Yeah, we like that one. Uh, <laughs> kudos to the flight model guy as well. This is just this is a real barrel of laughs. Wait, look at me go. Can you do the hang in the air thing? Oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, I just did it. <laughs> look at that. Oh. These years will never be the same. Very good. Right. I'm chuffed with that. Thank you, Grinelli and Co. for showing that off to us. We're going to go and do some silliness in it. Uh, anything else you want to say? Uh, just a big shout out one more time to Arrow, to Jazz, to Sensory, uh, Shadow, Razor, Razor, Team Aeroshell, all the guys that helped to get it to this point, a big thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well done, and guys. thank you guys, Grim Reapers, for taking the time to take a little yeah. look at this and uh, have some fun. Our pleasure. I hope you enjoyed that and see you later.